Okay, now I'm going to get into types of studies because um, um, it takes a lot of work to show whether and how strong the evidence is that vitamin D affects health outcomes. So there are a whole bunch of studies. There's ecological studies, both geographical and temporal. These are often the first studies to find something. For example, um, uh, Ricketts, in the old days, that, well, I guess has more of an observational study. But observational study, you do case control studies where you uh, compare those who have a disease to those who don't have a disease, what, what the difference is in their intake or vitamin D levels. Prospective studies where you enroll people in a study, you measure per, uh, uh, values of various factors at the outset, you follow them and see who develops different diseases. Cross-sectional studies, you um, uh, measure parameters and health conditions of people. Then you have the interventional studies, uh, the randomized controlled trials. You take people, um, you then randomize them to some receive the, like vitamin D and some do not. You compare the outcomes. You have observational interventional studies where you have an uh, open label study. They all know what they're taking. They all know what their vitamin D level is. Uh, and you look at the health outcomes, and you can have animal studies. And then there are mechanisms where you're you're looking at, well, what happens to the cells and the organs with vitamin D? And then finally, a new kid on the block is Mendelian randomization or genetic studies, where they look at, uh, they take a long, large number of people, look at their, uh, the, their the, the, the alleles of the vitamin D, uh, genes and find out whether um, they have developed a, a disease or not. Okay, ecological studies, uh, the geographical ones use population defined geographically and they compare outcomes, uh, uh, health outcomes with modifying factors, all average for the population level. And that's where I got my start in doing uh, health research. And I'll show a number of examples of this. The temporal ecological studies inv investigate trends or seasonal variations of health outcomes with respect to various factors, such as either summer and winter um, development of infectious diseases. Uh, here is an ecological study um, for dental caries or dental rank, dental condition with respect to um, UVB. So. These were men entering armed forces, their dental condition was measured, and they assigned a rank. The higher the rank, um, the poorer the condition. And what I showed when I looked at the, plotted them uh, versus the UVB in July for the state was that when you went to the very lowest levels in the Northeast United States, you had very high dental rank, very poor dental condition. When you got to where you had seven or to or higher kilojoules per meter squared, you had a uh, good dental condition. Uh, and it's, it's known that UVB through producing vitamin D uh, li uh, puts more um, what are called cathelicidins and defensins in the saliva, which kill the bacteria that cause dental caries. Um, they didn't understand that at the time, but they did show that UVB and vitamin D reduce the risk of dental caries. Observational studies, uh, case control. I think I've already discussed this. Um, the best known intervention studies are randomized controlled trials. Most random vitamin D random RCTs are based on the guidelines for pharmaceutical drugs. In drug RCTs, the only source of the drug is in the trial. Um, excuse me. And the controlled drug group does not receive any of the drug. In most vitamin D RCTs, participants have above average serum 25 hydroxyl vitamin D concentrations, are given relatively low vitamin D amounts, and all participants are permitted to obtain additional vitamin D from the sun diet and supplements. In addition, results are analyzed according to treatment, not, not hydroxy vitamin D. As a result, most vitamin D RCTs do not find beneficial effects of vitamin D. 
Um, so one wonders, um, are, are these done because of, of, of lack of knowledge and stupidity? Or are they done this way uh, out of intent to show that vitamin D doesn't work? Um, ponder that. Um, the, um, it is possible, however, to do them basis, based on serum 25 hydroxyvitamin T concentrations. Um, and what you have to do then is, is measure 25 hydroxyvitamin D at, at before you enroll people, try to enroll people with low vitamin D levels give them a vitamin D dose is going to raise their level to high values that are going to be reduce the risk of, of disease and um, and then measure their 20, achieve 25 hydroxy vitamin D levels. Uh, these are just starting to be uh, done this way. Uh, mechanisms, as I said, remember, most of the vitamin D effects are through the genomic actions, through calcitriol binding to vitamin D receptors coupled to chromosomes. Um, uh, the human, animals, and cellular studies use to identify and study mechanisms. Knowing the mechanisms strengthens the findings from population studies or epidemiological studies. Um, the, as I mentioned, these are uh, from genes. Um, the the best MR studies often include data from more than one hundred thousand participants. So these are um, calculation intensive. They they. They are often use data from um, a large data bank like the UK Biobank. Um, so physicians are taught to respect studies only from randomized controlled trials. Since most vitamin D RCTs have not been properly designed, conducted, or analyzed, and have not shown vi results of vitamin D that are beneficial, most physicians do not think that vitamin D has much benefit. Findings from observational and mechanistic mechanism studies are considered by experts 